All right. Let me teach you something about Charleston. Uh, the story of Charleston has, has always been a story of population density balanced with urban management or livability. This is a small land mass, uh, and it's a peninsula, which means we're beset on three sides by water. And there was an incentives package that was offered to densely populate this colony. Mandatory land ownership and freedom of religion. This was a very big hook for people like German Lutherans, Scottish Presbyterians, French Protestants called Huguenots, and uh, that brought a lot of people over. And the ability to own land while you came over here to do this, 85% of the immigrants that came to Carolina had never owned land before. So we can't build skyward because we're built on top of a marsh, so we can't waste any space in between our houses. This row housing was adopted from England, actually, um, to densely populate a small landmass, sharing walls with each one of your neighbors, as you can see here. Population density, urban management, that if this house catches on fire, guess what? Never does only one building catch on fire in Charleston, South Carolina. It doesn't happen that way. So without redrawing the real estate lots, we had to redraw the floor plans of our houses from like this to like this. And this leads us to a new floor plan of house called the Charleston Single House. It's called the Single House because it is a single room wide to the street, two to three rooms deep. This front door is a false front door. It does not lead into the house. It leads onto a porch also called a piazza. And the Porsches of Charleston, we've all heard of the Porsches of Charleston. They were even referenced in Barack Obama's first acceptance speech. So the Porsches of Charleston are an essential piece of this new floor plan of house, the Charleston Single House.